Yeah. Now GameStop only what you would say of the, of the merchandise in their store, it's thirty percent games, seventy percent T-shirts, collectibles, Funko Pops, and Mega figures. Mm-hmm. What's the first word of Pops again? Funko. It's back to Funko Land, baby. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. There you go. the next one begins hey everyone so welcome to why you still hear the show that we talk about whatever we want and today lucas what are we talking about spoiler spoiler alert blood and honey part two and this is what i yes. really want to talk about was the spoiler of portion of course and just to do you know the stuff that we have to do get the boring stuff out of the general way. house no offense um oh my god This is what OMG. happens when you're unprofessional. <laughs> um, but before that, general housekeeping, right? So it's directed by Reese Frake Waterfield. It is written by the same gentleman as well, along with Matt Leslie, the writer of Summer of 84. Very good. Uh, it stars Scott Chambers. Again, my hat goes off. Great job. Uh, Tallulah Evans, Ryan Oliva, Louis Santer. Eddie McKenzie, Marcus Massey, uh, Simon Callow. You know, there's a lot of people in this movie. And just to give you a general synopsis, according to IMDb, apparently, uh, not wanting to not wanting to live in the shadows any longer. Winnie the Pooh, Piglet, Owl and Tigger take their flight to the town of Ashdown, leaving a bloody trail of death and mayhem. In their wake. Accurate. Very accurate, yes. So Owl, Lucas's favorite character, um basically says people are getting way too close to us. They're close. Closer than they've ever been. Who Ashdown views our existence. There's a plague as horrors of the hundred acre wood. You know, like yeah. this is the closest they've ever come. And because of murders, the police ended up in their house, basically. And this is unacceptable. And so they're going to be killed if they don't do the killing first. So then they go to the town of Ashdown, which is where hundred acre wood resides. And then they take the fight to them rather than waiting for the fight to be brought. Which is explained why everybody dies in this movie. And according to uh, Reese Frake Waterfield, at the beginning of the movie, when he again said, I already mentioned it, I think in the other review, that there's going to be a lot of deleted scenes on the Blu-ray because there there were many, many deaths cut from the final 20 minutes of the movie, apparently. Hmm. That's surprising. Yeah, and there was already a lot of deaths anyway because (laughs) I was... I was wondering at one point, like, because we're in spoiler portion. I mean, this is early, but I'm like, why the fuck is Winnie the Pooh trying to kill his brother and his family? If this is the case, like everybody's supposed to die in this movie. Every like nobody, nobody's safe. It it starts with the right. RV thing and goes from there, which what I'm going to which which was an awesome scene, by the way. I guess we can start with the beginning. So sure, we have our nice little uh, cartoony opening a la the first movie, which. Cool, but. So we have the scene of these three girls who are camping and presumably the hundred acre woods in this RC, RC <laughs> this, this, they're in an RC car. <laughs> they're in this RV, they're camping, whatever they stop. And then they're getting stalked by uh, Winnie the Pooh who flips. They're this trying. Pole. Yes. They're trying to like speak to the ghosts of hundred acre wood. They're trying to like, like reach through to them and so they, they had seen exorcist Belie- they had seen exorcist believer they go to the woods um <laughs> and then they get attacked by the demon himself Pooh, uh which was a great kill by the way so he locks all of yeah. them but one in there well she escapes through the window but mm-hmm. he knocks over the whole rv sets the fucking thing on fire right um 
this girl's crawling out. Her face is completely burned. And I'm, if I'm not mistaken, it was Owl who said, like, I'll make you look like us. Like, you're going to get disfigured. Says something along those lines. And then. Oh, really? I, I missed that. And then. Uh, that. So, yeah, something like that. So then the one girl's trying to escape through like a like a golf cart type thing. And then mm-hmm. it's not starting like every other movie, right? And then Pooh yeah. has one of his new tropes. He has this bear trap, which is hilarious, that he carries that he around, carries with, around him. with him. Yeah. Well, don't forget the explosion, though, because this is in the trailer, so you can actually show the footage where oh, cool. he comes up to the golf cart and it explodes, and he's, like, you know, holding her. like, And you see the silhouette mm-hmm. of him like next to her as the explosion goes in the background of the RV exploding. Pretty cool. Which, I was like, um, I, I was getting chills a little bit at this. Yeah, part. it was pretty. I'm it was like, pretty awesome. So it was a cool. great. It was a great exposition. It was a good opening. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> we get our first gratuity kill of the movie, which we talked about in our our previous non spoiler yeah. portion. So, who yeah. the that same chick just takes her, fucking throws her on the ground, or she gets caught in the bear trap first, if I'm not mistaken, when she tries to run her leg, and he and he drags her with it yes like he's walking hold you know with the bear trap like on her leg and he's pulling her behind him which i was still on board at this point not that i'm not on board with what they end up doing but i was confused why he kept breaking her legs and her all arms four of her stuff. limbs made yeah. her a quadriplegic and then fucking ripped her goddamn head off with the bear trap yeah he pushes her head into the bear trap which is f- that's fine i was just confused about the other part like it's like are I'm they, gonna, is that like I'm, a hunter thing i'm gonna immobilize you and watch you die kind of thing i guess like a mm. like a real hunter versus prey just on an extreme level here I'm trying to show you that we're, we're not here to fuck around i'm winnie the goddamn poo yeah you thought yeah oh bother i'm after you <laughs> it was interesting because it really shows you like oh this is different than the first movie but also on the other side of that there was because i'm just gonna be honest i missed the poo that was more like michael myers you know the one wielding the knife you know because that was a big part of that first movie that i thought was so cool because he reminded me so much of michael myers the way he walked the way he stood you know that kind of thing and you have that silhouette with him with the knife and the silhouette and i don't think he uses a knife a single time in this movie he just has the bear trap (laughs) which is fine i mean it's a new signature kill yeah yeah well now he's more like um like michael and rob zombies halloween too you know he can charge at you he can do one-liners yeah. you know we're really amping it up here i would say he's more like i don't know like the hills have eyes or something you know not knowing much about <laughs> that series you know because he uses like weapons you know like like actual like you know like stuff to his disposal because michael doesn't do that right he just uses the knife for his hands um and it's like a little bit like Jason, I guess. So I don't know. It's I guess it's more I was, like I Jason. was comparing a bit of a, a bit of a Jason vibe because Jason can run in charge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I guess that's probably the closest to compare him to a more um, violent Jason, so to speak. And if you are somebody that missed our our non spoiler review, basically this movie is significantly better than the first one like we're talking about like this is like it's a real movie this time around you know i hate to make the joke but for for anybody that's played call of duty 4 you know when you start the campaign you go through like this mock run you know with a gun you shoot dummies that like come up and come down whatever and then you're timed on it if you do it fast enough you get an achievement or a trophy and uh if you perform the course slower the second time around uh soap just goes oh no if you do a little bit better by like a few seconds he just says you did better but it's not hard to improve on garbage and that's what i was thinking (laughs) that was an improvement but it's not hard to improve on garbage try it again while watching the movie but it is it's a lot better than the first movie i just had to put that in there because i'm going to put the clip and you're going to have no context of it (laughs) anyway correct anyway it's, it's 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 a tigger jump leaps and bounds better to steal Braden's joke from the previous video it's like i said it's this it's good correct. enough it's good enough to make me interested in the universe so 
it was good. You know, it was, it was it, they, they yeah. took all the money they made from the other one and it, it's like a, it's like a film. So not just the Pooniverse is enough to make me excited in the entire twisted childhood universe. Sure. I guess that's what I mean. Okay. Not just the team up movie, but everything that they're working at. Pinocchio yes. is the one, like we said, that I'm really the most excited for. Yes. Cause it gave out some, some good details, some shit that I like. Yes, indeed. Uh, I agree. I, I'm excited to see what they do with this. And um, so, you know, I mean, the next thing I'll mention is that I think that Piglet was absolutely 100% wasted in this movie. That's bullshit. And that's a huge fucking point of contention that I can't even talk about in the spoiler, non, non-spoiler portion. Yeah. Because he gets his head blown off in the first, like, 15 minutes of the movie. And, like, by the by the second not act. not quicker. It was so, okay, so it's like right. It's, yeah, it's right at the fucking beginning of the movie. So, like, mm-hmm. owl, owl is carrying the movie on his wings, as far as I'm concerned. He's the he's the most consistent character that you spend the most time with, right? Yep. Tigger shows up relatively early, but you don't very get his sporadically until the two. Well, he bounces around, you know, he's a he taunts you, <laughs> but like he doesn't shine until like the last part of the second third of the movie like during the rave sequence when he has his full on Freddy Krueger thing which is just reminds me of the dream sequence in Freddy vs. Jason when he's taunting him and he's all up and down the room that's exactly what that brought me to I don't think he even shows up until the second act because the police are in their house and they're looking around after the murders have happened and people have disappeared and they go, let's bounce. And he goes, that's my line. My line. And then yeah. attacks them. And that's the first time you see him, but then he disappears and then he shows up again and then he disappears. And he, he doesn't have any uh, resolution to his character by the end of the movie, unfortunately. But, um, but I kept expecting Piglet to come back and he really doesn't. You see him briefly in the post credit scene or the mid credit scene or whatever, where they're using honey to resurrect them, I guess. <laughs> I thought that was fucking um, hilarious. Speaking of the that, way. using honey to resurrect. So the, what I've always understood is that blood and honey, obviously, you know, blood and money, but like it, it comes from the fact that in the first movie, Winnie the Pooh is constantly mixing honey with blood and eating it you know yes. keep shoving it into his mouth and it's dripping down which i think is a great image personally yeah. um and that was not in this movie at all and so it kind of you know it's like you know obviously i'm being facetious but Good why is it called blood and honey <laughs> you know if there's no blood and honey in this movie and there's no honey until that moment there is blood though um so I thought that was interesting. Yeah, and so like the, like the honey is like uh has it has properties of, of the philosopher's properties. stone um and he, properties of phoenix tears. So we're getting we're getting real sorcerer with with this. Yes. But what I like to think is because you know Owl is like again he's giving a speech he's he always has something to say. He does. Um, he and monologues. More, it, yeah, it's more. Yeah, it's monologues. It's more wise statements. Again, wise old owl versus Tigger, who just was Freddy Krueger in every sense of the word with his one-liners, down to the bitch, bitch. like the entire time. Yeah, um, but so you know he and they because the the scientist when uh Chris is reading when he's reading when he's listening to the audio cassette recording in the car of what the scientist was able to do, he said you know they got more feral, they got more angry. Uh, they're more animal-like, their DNA changed, and they got regenerative properties. And I'm like, fuck mm-hmm. yes, Piglet is coming back. Never came back. Yes, I and then expected they him show to them, come back immediately. And then they show them at the end where it looks like their heads, because, you know, uh, Winnie the Pooh, Pooh bothered, and they got hit in the fucking head. He, mm-hmm. does, he has one line again, like in the first movie, it's at the end. And then yep. it shows like uh, you know it's it's still on in frame but it's out of focus and the the head just kind of like curls back together like it's like morphing mm-hmm. back. I like to think that's from all the honey. He's rubbing the honey, the blood and honey together. The blood mixes yes. with the honey and then it regenerates the face. And then we're gonna get yes. some like seed of Chucky type, uh, or seed of Chucky. Why did I say that? Bride of Chucky type uh, recreation of Piglet and Pooh. I think that they're just going to heal completely from the honey. <laughs> um, 
there was a uh, Lucas was jumping around there like Tigger. Uh, we yes. do have to mention the fact that lore has been changed in this movie and that the very first movie is completely non canon, I guess. I mean, I have questions. Um, I would love to ask the the actual, you know, writer and director this kind of stuff. Um, because how much of that first movie actually happened? Right. Well, it's not even like a stab situation where stab was like based off of it because there's the one part where uh Christopher Robin gets fired from his job, you know, and then the guy is like, I know you didn't do all that. It's just based on a movie, but it's bad for the look, you know, like you gotta understand that it's just business. I gotta get rid of you. And I'm like, so what happened? Yeah. What didn't happen? The movie is I altered. Agreed. Because when they're watching Blood and Honey and he goes, it's yeah. Bruin time. He has yes. the, the, the Morbius reference. <laughs> yes. Which was fucking hilarious, by the way. Yes. So like what? Yes, which raises what... more questions than it answers. Let me tell you. <laughs> it's Bruin time. <laughs> yeah. So it's um, like basically that the movie as we saw it is a movie in this universe. But what's it based on? Is it based on a real thing that happened? Is Because they keep saying the 100 Acre Massacre, right? And they keep saying last year and this kind of stuff. Well, it's the so, two guys in the van where the they're day. combining the black the phone, day. the grabber, and um, Five Nights at Freddy's into one. Is that the beginning of the massacre? They kidnap the kids and then what, they kill somebody afterwards? Some of the movie did get a little convoluted. I don't know. I, thought, okay. I don't know. I, I think the massacre is supposed to be what we saw in the first movie that they made a movie about so that's the thing i'm confused on so how that. is christopher and robin completely intrinsically guilty of it it's he's it's not weird. but they think that he was the one that murdered all these people because they think that Pooh is not real okay that's what so I, yeah because all these okay. people that died they think he because he was the survivor of it he was the lone survivor they think that he was the one that did all this because christopher robin is there at the very end of the first movie running away as Pooh is stabbing the girl. So we have to assume that some of this stuff happened, though there's a moment where um his friend is babysitting that kid and he goes, Isn't isn't this based on your boyfriend? And she's like, Yeah, but it's all lies. What well, yes. uh, explain to me <laughs> what's lies and what's not. I mean, because because it's it shouldn't be lies because it shows in the movie that he's not responsible for the murder. You know what I mean? So that movie's so, not lies. The babysitter part. I have to say this right now. Obviously, he has the Freddy Krueger sweater on with the with the Jason type mm -hmm. mask with a machete, you know, whatever. Funny kid. There's a line where she's like, she's trying to get him to go to bed or is right around that part. And I now I want to rewatch it to make sure I get it 100 percent But it wasn't correct when I watched the movies. I'm like, wait, what? She, you know, says something about him. It's time to go to bed. And she said something about in this version Jason of Jason dies in this one. Yes. So mm -hmm. why would Jason die when he's wearing the Freddy sweater? And his name is Freddy. He was not wearing Jason. a hockey mask. But it was annoying because his name is actually Freddy. And he had the yeah. Freddy mask on. So I'm like, am I, I stupid? Know. She was jumping back and forth, calling him Jason and Freddy okay. when she was talking to um, Christopher on the phone as well. Um before we get too far down the line, though, Scott Chambers, my God. I mean, some would say that he's too good for this movie. I would I would lean on that because I I'm was going to ask if, if this guy has ever had like acting classes or like a considerable history. of. Oh, short yeah, he films. is an actor, but he's also a producer. It's okay, not like yeah, they just because... picked it out of their head where they're like, well, you're going to be an actor now. Like, no, he's, he's an actor. Because his, 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 his acting prowess is definitely uh, definitely up there. The fake cry scenes yeah. aren't like the ugly fake cry, you know, where they're really mm -hmm. trying. It's like, it's more like, it's it's believable as fuck. So he pulled at my heartstrings for sure. And then there is the brother that's missing, that's always been missing mm -hmm. since he was a kid, right? Which you know evokes Plot that twist. Five Nights at Freddy's kind 100%. of feeling that we're talking about, um, even down to the car and trying to remember the car and who's driving the car, you know, all of that kind of stuff. I don't know if they were inspired by it or what, but it's very similar. Um, maybe this movie was already written by the time that movie came out. I don't know. We'd have to ask them, but definitely evokes the same kind of feelings, and that brother. Here's the lore change. 
the brothers poo right and i'm not so hot on that change i'll be honest well neither am i in the second because i like i was questioning it i thought it was and then i'm like oh god but it was the moment when and i fucking knew they were going to do something with this because it's right out of the chucky tv series and right when you see it it's like course but when the husband you know pulls the the dishes out of the dishwasher and every the sh- every sharpest knife it, is it was a chucky kill up you 100 percent. and then yep, i knew exactly I what knew, i thought i knew where this was going and but the fact that the mom was killed with it by poo her own it's son really saddened me man like i told you when i because i saw the movie first and then yeah. lucas saw it a day after me his parents dying like i loved his parents yeah they were all really like good. they were fantastic and as far as her death scene is concerned why was she doing dishes at like two in the morning and just like not even candlelight just like the pale moonlight i know i thought that too <laughs> yeah yeah i get you're setting up your exposition but anyway with um... the devil in the pale moonlight <laughs> um yeah i don't know i don't know there's definitely some things that i found confusing and you know, the two things that I really liked about that first movie is like Pooh, the way that Pooh looked and acted, and yep. then the fact that they were they were feral <laughs> creatures, you know, that they were normal creatures to begin with when Christopher was a kid, and then they became feral when yeah, he that's, left that's them. That's not the case in this. So this is the unofficial it's sequel not. to the animal. If you look Rob Schneider, there's a part where he's looking out of the corner and he does this and he comes out. Yeah. Yes. Um they were they were children that were uh kidnapped by a third party middleman who happens to work at the hospital that Christopher is at, which talk about conveniences. There's a lot of there's a lot of conveniences yeah, in this movie. I'm okay to to overlook that kind of stuff though. Yeah. Um plot contrivances, but they have Yeah, so he he stalks him all the way to his house and then they have the whole he was like, he's gonna kill him. But then mm-hmm. he finds out that, you know, he didn't. And I'd still be mad at the guy regardless for being, a you know, a child trafficker. Uh, uh, yeah. So that's yeah, why it, it's good that he kills himself. <laughs> I mean, it's not good, but yeah, it, it resolves that whole plot line in a way. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. But anyway, the point still stands that the kids were all gone to prison. abducted. They were all um, experimented at on. Yeah. And that was yeah. the, that was the vibe I got immediately. I'm like, there you go. Like, I mean, it's it works. It's fine. But like, it's like if it if it wasn't written before the movie came out, that's shameless. almost. <laughs> There's also a theory that the doctor is Owl, that he changed himself into Owl. And that's why I like, Owl is that's like the cool, leader of them. I really like that. Yeah, I'll, I'll take I, that. Giving Cody Leach uh, credit, I think that might have been him that came up with that. Oh, I watched God. a you couple what? videos. Though, I'm not sure so if I not. like that idea anymore. Scratch that. Reverse it. <laughs> it might not have been him. <laughs> I'll find out. Um, but yeah, so and that the janitor guy, he was a great actor. I could tell that from the uh, trailer, though, and he did not disappoint. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so there was the entire the rave and I so bo- so before Tigger comes in, Owl starts off and he goes, "All right, well it's time for you two to have your fun." Mm-hmm. Hoping maybe Piglet was going to be there. Nope, still not coming so back. Too, yeah, um, I was hoping. Thought it was going to be like his grand like comeback. Like he, yeah, because like, there is a chainsaw in the movie. I thought maybe, you know, being a pig like a butcher, kind of like this mm-hmm. Leatherface type character, he would have utilized it. Nope. However, I do love that bear trap kill when he like lassos her head with it basically pulls her head off it goes slow yeah. motion and then he fucking hits it and then it goes back to like mm-hmm. you know the regular pace and the music kicks up and i'm like yeah this is that was some pretty good editing like i mean there was, was a lot of effective um there was a lot of good kills in the movie however if it wasn't for scene. tigger standing out in that rave scene because who goes in there it's like if you remember there's like those those drapes like uh you know see-through plastic you know thing you can walk through he kills her like that and then it's he starts to kill everybody and then it just goes to like a zoom out shot of that you know doorway he walks out and then tigger does most of the killing to those you know those four or five people in that one room and then it cuts to a shot of like a hundred bodies where it's like all right action and they're all laying on the floor and it just looked wrong um but like I said, sometimes 
who also runs down the hallway on all fours and it's and not it, something they should have done because obviously they didn't have enough time to do the effect because when they go from Pooh's perspective even then he's kind of slow and it's it just looks it's just up on like, yeah i know i don't know why they did it i'll be honest with you they, they use three different angles for it and none of them work together in cohesion oh. <laughs> no if so. the animal with rob schneider can do it then they should have been able to so i have to assume <laughs> they ran out of time um yeah and so they yeah. probably should have taken it out of the movie but uh yeah then there's the whole tigger scene which that way we honestly could have talked about that in the spoiler um free review because they released that entire scene oh and, that's kind of a cop out man that's like a and, good surprise scene because I mean, he's it's haunting not, them not and using everything, great Freddy But things. him starting off where he says, like, hey, everyone, or whatever he says, you know, starting with that, that yeah. that scene was released. But um, what I wrote down here specifically was, dance, bitch. <laughs> and then his <laughs> putting his claw through the So uh, in a, in a super floor. similar one, remember when he goes, oh, it's time to clip those wings, bitch. And he's just going right on her yeah. back with the yeah, claws. Yeah. Great one. I, Very Friday. I wish there was more Tigger because he was the most unique one with the slashing and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, this is stuff that they can definitely improve on in the future. And Piglet, I was so excited to see Piglet, though, because he was like short and he was like, you know, like short and yep. creepy and goofy. Um, And I was like, oh, man, that was so disappointing. But whatever Very. we're past that i guess um yeah and then you know the movie basically just ends after christopher shoots Pooh, right so shoots him and he goes oh bother which you mentioned which is hilarious they're great. probably going to get a cease and desist from disney or something um because <laughs> i don't think that was in the books and then yeah then he gets killed but it's like where's owl in this moment where's tigger in this moment you know mm -hmm. what's going what is going on here you know and then it you yeah know, they, they rarely whatever. It, it seemed like they didn't have much screen time together it's like they were juxtaposed yeah throughout a lot of it i mean it could have been like a you know a filming timing constraint whatever what have you scheduling conflict yeah. i don't know what's going on behind the scenes we'll find out eventually yeah. um but again and uh and along with the oh bother line that the it's poo in time a lot of the kills mm -hmm. like the movie the up. other movie didn't make me laugh this movie it got a not belly laughs but i was like audibly chuckling throughout it was the very self-aware that's the one thing it did that the first movie didn't do was being self-aware. Yep. Now there are times that are a little bit too serious in this movie. I'll be honest. It feels like it's from a different movie. It's good. Don't get me wrong. And the acting is incredible. All the therapist scenes and stuff, but oh, yeah. sometimes it just feel it drags a little bit. It feels like it probably shouldn't be in this movie. You know, not that the um, pacing of the movie is bad, but for those scenes, it does interrupt the flow of it to where it's it like, does. wait, was this movie really an hour and 31 minutes? Because at times it felt like it, it was does. a little bit it longer. Feels, it feels like it's, a, it's sometimes, yeah, I hate to say this. It feels like it's two hours long, even though it's not. Um, but yeah, yeah uh, and Besides the rating, I just have one more thing to say, and that is: sure, did did they eat Eeyore? Was that is that canon from the first movie? Because if not, where's Eeyore? <laughs> yeah, did, wait, did he did he not get one? Not a mention at the very beginning because there were not people a single behind mention. me talking, and then the lights were on, and I was yeah. very distracted, very distracted mm -hmm. at the very beginning of the movie, to the point where I was like, "Is this going to be a leprechaun situation where I completely botch the beginning of the movie?" <laughs> Yeah. Um, but no, so not yeah, so a single so, mention. So you you know what's funny then to not mention Eeyore. So let's think about this. So right at the so I can't even call it a mid credit roll because they they show like ten seconds. I'm like putting my coat on. I'm like there's no way there's a there's an end credit sequence. I'm getting ready to leave, and then it starts immediately. So they have mm -hmm. Owl resurrecting them, whatever, and then it cuts back to the credits, right? And it has pictures. It's a picture of Pinocchio. Yep. Which is something I used in a, a video before. So why like, is that in the credits for a while. Of, of this movie? Where's Eeyore? It's the Pooniverse. I know it's the Pooniverse, but this is Blood and Honey Part 2. If Blood and Honey Part 3 isn't coming out until the Pooniverse is done, then this is separate too. Yeah, it's Poon time, I don't motherfucker. Know, man. I don't know. They showed Bambi <laughs> in the credits too. Um, and not only that, but... 
I just have to say, like, it's Puniverse, right? Like, universe. Yeah. For some reason, Charlie, you know, Moist Critical calls it Puniverse. They can bring the vagina teeth girl into the Puniverse. She can fight Winnie the Pooh and Piglet by biting their cocks off. The Puniverse. Like, do, you, do you call it Universe? You could no? possibly. Let's not call it that then. It's Puniverse, all right? Um, well, so... the filmmakers say Puniverse right at the beginning of the movie, so. Yeah, exactly right. But um, you guys did it, though. Great job. You... Yeah, hats off. Good job. You some people are being dicks and they're like, well, yeah, it's better than the first one, but everything is. Come on, let's give credit where credit's due. This was this improved upon it and then some. This movie is a very watchable movie. It feels real, it feels cinematic. It doesn't feel cheap at all. I'll be honest with you. Not at all. There was so compare one a moment... movie that doesn't seem low budget. Compare this to the Pope's Exorcist. All right, then get back to me. Right. And that's a studio picture, right? So what the hell? But there's there was one moment that I have to mention that felt like it didn't really belong in the movie. And it was that moment where they go to like the rave before it's it has officially started. You know, yeah. they're just setting up the rave. And it's just kind of like they're maybe to see what the town thinks of Christopher or something because they're like, oh, you know, he's just sort of walking around. And they're just like, oh, why well, we don't want him here because he's a murderer or whatever. And he's like, you know, I didn't do that stuff, right? You know, and he's like, fine, I don't have to be here. Then and he leaves. I'm like, that probably could have been cut out of the movie. That was the only time I felt that. You know the scene I'm speaking of? Yeah, but I didn't even I didn't even really remember it until you just mentioned it. So maybe I didn't think it, that needed to be exactly cut out in right. particular. But I guess you could be misconstrued yeah, as a whiny case. bitch. <laughs> there you go. It's like poetry exactly. motion. Yes. Um, so what's your rating? We well, you know this already, but for the people six, that are watching this video. Six out of ten. Now, yeah. I think this has really good potential as a licensed video game. What do you think? I think that that would be awesome. I think that it would have to be in the style of like a, what are they called? Um, oh man, what are they called? Like Evil Dead and Friday the 13th and Texas Chainsaw. Um, what is that called? Like an online only game? No. It has a name to it. I want to say atypical, but that's not right. It's a yes. something. Anyway. This is what it is right here. I don't know why I couldn't <laughs> think about that. Shit. Stupid. Anyway. Um, so yeah, mine 6.5 out of 10. And uh, I think that there's improvements, obviously, that can be done. But for the most part, I really liked it. Um, some stuff I didn't mention. I did mention the first video. The score is great. The cinematography is gorgeous. Um, there was a one scene that you wanted to mention as far as the cinematography goes. I had to do with uh, the, the lighting when she was doing the dishes at two in the morning and it was dark. Okay. Um, it did look good. It kind of reminded me of that leprechaun scene. Again, there's some parody. Mm -hmm. But there, there's one part of, of the lighting is what I wanted to mention. I said the lighting was good, but that part didn't make sense because she's doing the dishes and then it like shows you outside. So like it shows you zooming out on the window and she's like doing her thing. And there's like one light source and it's right from here. Right. So it's illuminating just her. You can see like the shadow from like casting out from the top of her face. And then they cut behind her shoulder and there's absolutely nothing that's illuminating anything. So that's what I said by like the glow of the pale moonlight. And okay. while it looked cool, it made no sense. So things looked good, but some things were like still, still amateur without really feeling like a total like student film in some case, like the other mm -hmm. movie did. Sure. Um, yeah, there you go. It wasn't as relevant, but just some, something to note, I guess, in conversation, but. Very good. Um, and mine was obviously the, a lot of stuff, but the, the father, son bird watchers before the kid sees owl and. I knew where they were you know, going that with that. Thing. And that was of fucking course. hilarious. It was. Um, but just that whole scenery with the fog rolling through and all that kind of stuff, it was it was very cool. But what did you guys think about it? Obviously, you've seen it if you've watched this video, I hope, unless you're just spoiling everything for yourself, which yes, bad. Don't do that. Whatever, do that. I don't care. Um, 
what do you guys think about it? Did you think this improves on the first one? Did you think it's it's not as good as the first one? Did you think the first one was better? I don't think there's anybody Let that would know. say that. Did you think it was the same? I mean, come on, you know, tell us. Are you excited for the Puniverse? Comment below all your thoughts, and then we'll get back to you, okay? Are you excited for Pinocchio to wear skin to feel like a real boy with Chucky puppeteers? I hope that doesn't disappoint. That sounds fucking great. God, I hope not. I think that's where you'll get your, your Chucky fix with the staples and stuff, so we'll see. Yeah. Anyway, comment below what you guys thought of the movie. And uh, what was your favorite part? Tell us. What was your favorite character, your favorite moment of the movie, and your, I don't know, tell us something else. <laughs> I wish I could think of a specific. What? Just tell us your favorite character and your favorite moment in the movie. Easy peasy. All right. Very simple. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.